Hello Booktube. So this is the next in the ShakeTube series and this time I'm going to be talking about King Lear. Now this is the first time I have read King Lear. It's funny how studies work. I know that I did Hamlet at least twice in high school and once at Varsity and I know that I've done Othello and Macbeth and Much Ado About Nothing and Midsummer Night's Dream more than once but King Lear had never crossed my path before so this was quite an exciting um, read for me especially because I fell for all the suspense I had to um, I was hoping that letters would arrive in certain places that people would get certain places at the right time rooting for victors in battle and I had to stop myself every now and again and go sweetie this is known as the tragedy of King Lear Therefore, everybody is going to die. And that was not wrong, <laughs> because pretty much everybody does die. So King Lear is basically a, a play about familial issues, um, dysfunction between fathers and their children. So the, you have the first one with um, Lear and his three daughters, well, two of the three daughters. Now, Lear was already um, over 80, and he wanted to get rid of some of his responsibility as king, and he felt rather unwisely that the best way to um, decide who gets what piece of land would be to get his three daughters to declare how much they loved him and yeah flattery goes a long way not if you're planning on making wise decisions so anyway his two daughters Goneril and Regan they declare that they love him further than they can see and all sorts of other bunch of lies but his daughter that really does love him, Cordelia, she refuses to play with and just says she loves him because um, it's her honor or well, her duty to do so and that there aren't words to describe it. And Leah takes offense and he disowns her. So she ends up getting married to the King of France, lucky lady. However, Goneril and Regan, yeah, those two. In the beginning, I was prepared to give them a bit of... Um, credit because you know with age comes wisdom until you get to that turning point where things start to decline and it was clear that Leah had reached the declining stage as far as wisdom went um, because he had I mean besides the fact that this decision was not grounded on anything substantial as far as leadership qualities or anything else went um, his responses are horribly childish um, throughout this play whenever they've done a wrong towards him but yeah it didn't take long for me to realize that these two girls women did not care at all for their father at all um, they were gonna roll she fired half of his knights without asking she told her servants to give him poor service um, when he was going to go to Regan then, she sent her um, uh, messenger ahead and yo, basically poisoned that, not that it was ever going to work out otherwise. And um, so that, that alone was rather telling. Lear, however, only realized a bit later though that his daughters did not love him at all and that um, they were in it for themselves the more power that they had well the more the more time that they had with power the, the worse they got um, the second familial story was between Gloucester and his two sons now he had his um, true heir which is Edgar and then his bastard which was Edmund note to Shakespeare if you're going to have two kids from the same bloke you know choose a different sounding name not one starting with the same two letters it gets a bit confusing for a first time read but anyway, you know Barry, why didn't he go for Barry? It would have been different. <laughs> but anyway, so Edmund um, was the bastard and he wanted some recognition. And you can't blame the guy necessarily in the beginning because, you know, it's, it's a bit harsh to get blamed for being conceived when that was out of your control. But um, so the first person he discredits is his brother Edgar, makes it seem like he is plotting against his father. And then when his father reveals that he is siding with Cordelia, which is um, King Lear's third daughter, the youngest one, um, he reveals this to Regan and um, Goneril, who um, then capture Gloucester. And I think it was Regan who had his eyes removed and all sorts. And Edmund did not bat an eyelid. He wasn't there. But when they told him his plans, well, 
they weren't up he wasn't bothered in the slightest so there was issues to do with that and then Gloucester and Edgar end up um, sorting out and under, clearing up the understanding and Lear and, and Cordelia do as well although a bit late because as I said everybody dies <laughs> yeah um, I really enjoyed this as I said um, I, I really liked seeing um, King Lear he was quite hilarious I don't think he was supposed to be but when he went mad he went really mad and that was quite fun um, as I said I found myself really rooting for this to work out I can't say that I admired Lear as a king but I I really really liked his one guy Kent who he had banished after he'd made the decision with these daughters and to get rid of Cordelia Kent stood up to him and he, he he very explicitly called him stupid and Shakespeare has a way with words nobody can say stupid like Shakespeare <laughs> and anyway so he was banished but Kent was very loyal and he came back in disguise pretending to be somebody else and offered his advice to Lear and Lear at that point was so short on people that he took anything that he could find and um, so Kent was keeping Cordelia informed as to what was happening which I liked as well but yeah when Kent got hold of Oswald because um, Oswald was the messenger from Goneril to Regan and um, um, Lear had sent Kent through and Kent when he gets hold of Oswald before they fight he had a, a scene, well, paragraph this long of just insults, broken up by commas. It was fabulous. That That's the kind of thing that you can actually do something with in the classroom. It was fun. Actually, this play would be really fun to teach because there's so many fights and so many things going on that it can be a, quite an active class, unlike Hamlet. Mm, yeah, Hamlet, horrible to teach. Great to read, horrible to teach. This one would be fun, though. Anyway, moving on. Um, what else can I say about this? Um, I must admit I was very disappointed that Cordelia died at the end. Uh, I knew going into this, the only thing that I knew going into this was that Leah had three daughters and that Leah died at the end. And I was hoping that, you know, if they were going to save anybody, it would be Cordelia. But alas, the tragedy struck there too. Um, yeah, the sisters even poisoned each other, proving once again that they well, the one, um, it was um, Goneril that poisoned Regan, and then um, when Regan died, then Goneril stabbed herself in the chest, and oh, good Lord, all the drama. There was lots of drama, but there was no dull moment, which was great. Anyway, so that is a very, very brief idea as to what happened in King Lear. I can't really say that I can analyze much of this because it's a first reading and yeah I finished it an hour ago so <laughs> I haven't really had much time to think about it to do it more justice I'd need to read it again but onwards with the rest of the TBR pile that needs to be ch um, tackled and nailed down but um, one thing that I do have to say about this though is that from having read so much Shakespeare and having really looked at it because teaching it you really need to look at themes and motifs and things like that and there are definitely similarities throughout um, I mean appearance versus reality I mean in the last couple of plays that we've spoken about on, on fourth shake tube I mean that's been such a real trend um, even with this one you know the the appearance oh we love you daddy but no actually we don't and Edmund who looked like the loyal son who wasn't and the wives Goneril and Regan who looked like loving wives whereas um, Goneril was quite happy at the thought of having Edmund bump off her husband so she could marry him instead yeah <laughs> there, there was a lot of appearance that was not real and I enjoyed that I, I must admit I really enjoyed this and I think what I'm going to remember King Lear for most of all is the insults because <laughs> they were rather fabulous <laughs> anyway oh and that one scene with Edgar when he was talking in a dialect good lord you know Shakespeare's Shakespearean language can take a bit of getting used to when it's in bloody dialect what the hell is going on I had to read that out loud very slowly that took some time just that passage but yeah I really enjoyed this I hope you guys did as well if those who are taking part in ShakeTube 
And um, yeah, next week, Macbeth. I'll see you then. Bye.